Earlier this year, Huawei came out with a pseudo flagship of sorts, the SNP7. Well, I call it a pseudo flagship mainly because it still had Huawei's last generation chip inside. Now Huawei has come out with their latest Kirin 920 octa-core chip toting Honor 6 or Glory 6 as it might be known in some markets. So how does the Honor 6 fare? Does it fare any better? How does the high silicon Kirin 920 hold up? Well that's what we aim to find out in this video. So if this is your first time here or in case you've plain old forgotten, my name's Ash, this is C4E Tech and you're watching my full review of the Huawei Honor 6. Let's get started. So let's start with the build. To the front, on top, you have the notification LED, sensors, earpiece and a 5 megapixel front facing camera. Lower below, you've got the 5 inch display that features on screen keys. To the back, we have a 13 megapixel rear camera with a dual LED flash, honor branding, and at the bottom, the internal speaker. We have 4 metal on 3 sides here. Up top, we have an IR blaster, secondary noise cancelling microphone, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. The volume rockers, power button, and a flap housing the dual SIM and micro SD card slots to the right. Keep in mind the variant sold here in India would have only one SIM card slot. Then we have the primary microphone and micro USB port at the bottom and nothing to the left. With the thickness of 7.5mm and a weight of 130 grams, the Honor 6 is pretty comfortable to use single-handed. Also note there is a lack of Huawei branding anywhere on this phone. The Gorilla Glass 3 covered Japan Display Made Full HD IPS display on the Honor 6 gives it a pixel density of 441 pixels per inch. No issues here. As with most displays these days, it's sharp and reproduces colors accurately. Viewing angles are good, Huawei even lets you tweak the color temperature and being bright enough, the display is quite legible outdoors. Underneath the hood, the Honor 6 is powered by Huawei's own high silicon Kirin 920 chipset. This features another heterogeneous multiprocessing enabled implementation of the big little architecture with two sets of cores. First, we have four high powered Cortex A15 cores clocked at 1.7 GHz each and then we have four low-powered Cortex-A7 cores clocked at 1.3 GHz each. And since HMP is enabled, any combination of these cores including all eight can run at once depending on the processing power required. These cores are coupled with a Mali T628 MP4 GPU and 3 gigs of RAM. The CPU performance is really good as evident by the synthetic benchmark results here, but the Mali T628 MP4 GPU just cannot hold its own against the Adreno 330 on competitors' devices. That being said, the fact that it's not as good as an Adreno 330 doesn't make it a bad GPU. The Mali GPU will run just about any game you throw at it. There might be the occasional frame drop or a little lag when you run the most intensive titles at the highest settings though. Anyway, the audio output via the internal speaker is average. While there is no distortion, the audio feels flat and the levels are just about okay. Now, all this is powered by a 3100 mAh non-user replaceable battery and the battery life is pretty good. With moderate to heavy usage, the Honor 6 managed to get me through a day on a single charge every single time. To put that into numbers, on a looping video playback test, the Honor 6 lasted a little over 10 hours before running out of juice. Huawei has also thrown in a few battery tweaking options here, including an extreme power saving mode similar to implementations from HTC and Samsung. Now let's move on to the camera. Sony's IMX214 sensor seems to be the sensor of choice for Chinese manufacturers these days and Huawei follows in footsteps of compatriots Oppo, Xiaomi and OnePlus here. The pictures shot with the 13 megapixel rear camera are pretty good. Colors are natural, images are sharp, there's enough detail here. Macro shots have beautiful bokehs thanks to the f2.0 aperture but I couldn't help feeling that other manufacturers do have better implementations of the IMX214. It's also worth noting that there is no 4K video recording here, but Full HD video recording is pretty decent. Now moving on to the UI, Huawei seems to have got most things right here. You get convenient access to filters, hit the key to the top right and you get options that Huawei feels people would most often use. Now hit the settings icon there and you get granular control. It's worth noting that the all focus mode here lets you choose uh, the object in focus after the shot's taken. And it works surprisingly well. 
The ultra snapshot mode from the SNP7 makes a return here and works faster than ever. If you need to take a picture real quick, just hit the volume down key twice and the Honor 6 turns the camera on and shoots a pic. It even shows you how long the whole process took. Pretty good. Next up, we get to the software and this Honor 6 you see currently runs on Android 4.4 with its custom Emotion UI or MUI 3.0 on top. In some markets like India, it would run on MUI 2.3 out of the box and will be upgraded to 3.0 later. One of the first things you'd notice here is the Android LS on screen keys. That's a nice touch. You can even change the layout and add an option to hide the keys. If you wanted, you could hide the keys and never use them. Instead, the suspend button provides the same keys and a few extra options as well. The UI is flat with a lot of smooth transitions. Like most UIs from, Ch from the Chinese, MUI doesn't come with an app drawer. All apps go directly onto your home screen. Talking about the home screen, the home screen is pretty customizable too. You can choose the grid size, transitions and so on. You even get a themes manager with a bunch of themes available. Overall, the UI is fluid at most times, barring the occasional stutter, apps open up quick and the experience is smooth. So with that, we enough get to the price and the Honor 6 is priced at around $350. For this price, I feel it does offer value. When it comes to price to performance ratio, I'd put it right behind the OnePlus One and the Xiaomi Mi 4. And I've given that both OnePlus and Xiaomi have issues meeting demand, something Huawei generally has no problems with, the Honor 6 might just be what the doctor ordered. And here in India, the Honor 6 has just been launched at 19,999 rupees and given the competition that's either extremely overpriced or insanely hard to get, it makes quite a compelling case for itself. But that's just me though. If you were in the market today looking to buy a phone in this price range, would you give the Honor 6 a shot? If not, what other phone would you go with? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. By the way, if the Honor 6 isn't available where you're from, you could import one and if you do choose to do so, I'd recommend picking one up from merrymobiles.com. Additionally, you could use the code C4E Tech if you're shopping via Merry Mobiles to get $5 off. The value of the code and or the code itself might change in the future, so if and when it does, I'd let you guys know via the description below, so make sure you check that space before you order. And if you are from India, like I said, the Honor 6 has just been launched. You could pick one up from Flipkart because Flipkart's selling it exclusively. But before you do that, you could sign up with GoPesa.com. GoPesa is India's highest paying cashback site and helps you get the best deals, be it cashback or coupons. Just sign up with GoPesa.com, find the store you want. They have a huge list of over 300 stores, including Flipkart, Snapdeal and eBay. Head on over to the site, shop. The retailer provides GoPesa commission and GoPesa provides you cash back. You can use this cash back to recharge your phone or DDH or just transfer it to your bank. Anyway, I'll leave a link to GoPesa.com in the description below. And since they are sponsoring this video, do let them know we sent you by signing up with the URL www.gopesa.com slash ref slash C4E tech. And so with that, we get to the end of this review. Hope you guys liked it. Hope you found it useful. If you did, please do give this video a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, do stay subscribed. And from this review on, I will be having a FAQ section in the description where I'll try to answer the most frequently asked questions from the comment section. So if you have a question, do check the description. I might have already answered it. If not, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to get back to you guys. So I guess that's pretty much it. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this is Ashia from C4E Tech signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.